growing up in the early 2000s, I had a few favorite rappers. Ludacris is one of them. 17 million sold in the USA and 24 million worldwide. Even after that, going on to be a movie superstar. Completely cemented in hip-hop. In the early 2000s, one of the most popular things to do, and even to this day, is one rapper pops and then they create an umbrella for everybody to fall under. Like Jay-Z did with Rockefeller or Master P did with No Limit. Ludacris' attempt at that was none other than DTP. DTP, which stands for Disturbing the Peace, consisted of Bobby Valentino, Sirius Jones, Phil Mob, Shauna, Willie North Pole, Player Circle, which consisted of Titty Boy and Dollar Boy, I-20, Norfolk, BKC, TK and Cash, Sharif, and Chingy. The artist who we'll be talking about today, though, is Titty Boy, also known as 2 Chainz. Out of all these artists, none of them has a relationship with Ludacris quite like 2 Chainz. As he said in many interviews, he has been with him the longest. And check out this clip. And I'm the host, Ken today. This is my establishment on the You know, everybody got that crib and got that family where everybody just feels welcome all the time. Hey, hey what's up, mama? Hey, what's going on with you? Hey, sweetie. It smells too good around here. What's going on with you? This Southern hospitality right here, this is what it's all about. Whenever I think I'm getting to a certain level, just go to the crib and have some catfish and eat some grits and have some macaroni and cheese and some mashed potatoes and all of that and some damn cool. In a jar. I don't need to say anything else. A lot of folks don't know about this stuff, man. It's real in that crib. This is how you keep it real, man. If the toilet is broke, you gotta reach down here and you know you gotta pull it up and it, and it will definitely flush like that, man. It's keeping it too real. When I say you gotta keep real people around you, that's the only thing keeping you from from like just completely losing your mind. Now, like you heard Ludacris say out his own mouth, you need to keep real people around you so you don't lose your mind. And anytime you want to feel real or back to those old roots, he stops by Titty Boy's crib. So as 2 Chainz descended to become one of the biggest stars in the 2010s, why wasn't Ludacris by his side? Your relationship with Ludacris. Now, um, earlier this week, he was on The Breakfast Club. You saw The Breakfast Club video? I heard about it, man. Okay. Uh, you know, I got to talk about man. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, could you explain thought, uh, your relationship with him? Yeah, man. It is what it is. Okay. Yeah, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I came up under that um, umbrella, DTP. They put me on. That's how I got here. You know mm. no, I, I mean, it, the, the reason why it seems like, it, it, this is just me from the outside looking in, it seems like it's love, but it's like I'm, I'm kind of upset love. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? From who, me? No, not from you. Oh, okay. From, from the other side. It seems like mm. it's, I'm kind of upset love. You understand what I'm saying? Damn. So that's why I'm... I'm you see that? <laughs> you see that? So I'm... <laughs> He in your building. I know you can't say nothing. You see that? <laughs> so that's why I'm asking, like, what type of, like, when I say that, meaning, say if you see each other, is it a, 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 is it a high or is it a, a, a stop, let's conversate? That's nah, what, you nah, know. No, nah, no, we, the, the, um, we hadn't seen each other because, of course, he had been, he'd been doing movies. Mm -hmm. You know, he let everybody know he's been doing five or something, like, a bunch of movies and stuff. And I've been doing a bunch of rap. Okay. So we crossed paths when his movie and my song was a part of the same thing, which is Fast, Fast and Furious 6. Mm -hmm. Um. Me and Wiz had the single for the for the, um, for the, for the sound for the movie, mm -hmm. and and he, you know, he's been a part of the movie before, and you know what I mean. So red carpet, we saw each other, we chatted. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, bro, you know, we still like fam. You know okay. what I mean? Like, um, he's a Virgo, I'm a Virgo. We came up together, we told jokes together, we ate together. But like, somebody grew up, and it was me. Okay. And I wanted to go get my own. I wanted to go do my own thing. I believed in myself. Whether you know he signed me to put me right here, whatever, what he ever he wants to say about that. The thing with me is. I know I'm winning right now. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I know I'm winning right now. Exactly. You know? Like 2 Chain said, around this time, Ludacris was being more and more recognized as being a movie star with his credibility and notoriety in music slowly declining. And during that time, Ludacris took to the airwaves to let it be known that he was still making money off the now very popular and lucrative career of 2 Chainz. 2 Chainz then went on The Breakfast Club to break down exactly how much that Ludacris was still making off his career. And Ludacris then went to a radio station to respond. Maybe a day ago, too, man. Um, you know, this ongoing kind of few, or not a few, but, you know, a conversation that about, you know, 2 Chainz and yourself, who's helping who, who's not dealing with who, 
And, you know, he came out to say, well, you said something in Boys or Less, like you were still making money off of him. And then he came out with a, a statement on the, um, the Breakfast Club about saying this right here. People want me to, you know, say, probably say something negative and do something negative. So I don't. You know what I mean? Truth of the matter is, I've been wanting to lead a label. You know what I'm saying? And when I left, they was like, I guess they knew. Yeah, I had to pay to leave. It's, it's 100000 100, yeah. Okay. It's 100000 It's a couple of albums. It's it's three people over there since you want to put the business out. Um, that's a hundred. It's a hundred to buy it into y'all. Yeah, I mean, I didn't put any business out. You know what I mean? And it's I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do you know put numbers or anything out like that. But like he said, I, I'm not gonna say anything negative either, man. Like at the end of the day, that's that. Like he said, that's my brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? We came up together. Um, you know, that, that was the first check that I got, but <laughs> at the end of the day, man, like I, I always tell you, like, I'm extremely proud of his success of and I want him to continue. The last time we had, you know, a real conversation, it was about him, you know, really getting his chapter in this hip hop book. And I feel like he's well on his way to yeah, doing that. Doing a great job. And he's doing a great job at it. So, man, I'm, I, I don't like being pit up against you know, trying to say things back and forth. Yeah, the, just, the media's going to try to yeah, create yeah, yeah. that, but, you know. And I'm, I'm going to shut it, like, I'm just going to shut it down. Like, I'm not here to just talk negative. That's my dude, man, and I, I'm i proud. Proud? I'm sure. Just as anyone else would be, man. Someone that was signing your label for 10-plus years with little or no success, as soon as they break out as a solo artist, they get to flourishing like 2 Chainz did. Of course, you're going to be a little salty about it. After this, 2 Chainz ludicrous. Continued to work on singles, and he worked on his upcoming album after these interviews came out. But it was never really the same. It's kind of like a situation where the student surpasses the master. Because in 2021, musically, 2 Chainz is way more relevant than Ludacris. Let me know what y'all think about this video, man. Like, subscribe, and comment. It's the Hip Hop Lab.